Welcome back to another episode of Friday Financial. And we are joined once again by Hillary Nichols, who is here in our loss mitigation. She heads our loss mitigation department here at MHV. Hillary, thank you for coming back on. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure. Your videos are always some of the most popular because they talk about something that everybody deals with, and that's debt and financial stress. So uh, we always appreciate the insights you share. And today we're going to go to the very beginning, um, that moment when you as a person really start feeling that stress and like, especially now, you know, everything's really expensive. Paychecks aren't going as far as they used to. What does somebody do when they first start to feel like, oh my gosh, I don't think I'm going to be able to handle this debt or pay these bills? Yeah, so, um, you know, a, a, a popular response to that that I've often seen is, you um, you know, somebody automatically assuming that there, there's no way out, there's nothing that they can do to fix this. You know, they, they make this income, that's it. They have the, these expenses, that's it. Um, and they don't really see the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, I think that the first, the first step is to really sit down and really take a look at your finances, you know, consider your income and your expenses, expenses being your debts, your monthly bills, but expenses also being your spending, you know, really look at what you're spending. So many people aren't really, they aren't fully aware of how much they're actually spending each month or where their money is even going when they find themselves um, in, in debt like this, you mm -hmm. know, small purchases here and there, eating out a couple subscription services, all of that adds up. Um, I really think the most important thing to do is take a look at your finances and, and sit down and hammer out a budget um, and a plan. Uh, you know, and there's there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of things that that you can do to get yourself out of that situation. But mm -hmm. that's definitely the first step is, is taking a look at the big picture mm -hmm. um, with open eyes, your income and your expenses. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you said something really important there, Hillary, and that's um, everything adds up because there's definitely <clears throat> um, a bit of pushback, I would say, on social media, particularly about stop telling me to not eat avocado toast in the morning or buy my coffee, you know, <laughs> and no one's saying you have to stop that forever. But if if you are in a position where you're starting to feel like you can't make ends meet or you're struggling with bills, it is those little changes, even if they're temporary, that could potentially make a difference. Yeah, absolutely. When you you know when you sit down and you do look at uh, your finances, you you create a budget, and if your budget shows that you have a deficit, that you're putting out more than you're uh, taking in, you know you need you you have to consider whether some of those things can be eliminated. You know those the the wants versus the needs. You know canceling some subscription services, reducing service plans when you can, like your cell phone bill, your cable, or your internet. Um, you know seeking consolidation offers at lower interest rates, um, talking to your creditors to see if there's any type of programs that they mm -hmm. offer. But sometimes, you know, at the very base of it, sometimes what's necessary is a, is a complete lifestyle change, you know, mm -hmm. a complete change of your outlook, accepting the fact that that change needs to happen and believing that it's possible to improve your financial well-being altogether, you know, focus on improving your financial well-being stop comparing yourself to everybody around you and what you see on social media and who's spending uh, their money on you know this vacation or or this brunch uh, you know practicing mm -hmm. some financial restraint trying not to make purchases using credit cards to build up more debt you know eliminating that unnecessary spending mm -hmm. um you know, and if if after making some of those lifestyle changes, you're still left with a deficit, it goes further than that. You know, it goes, you know, if you're still left with a, de a deficit after making those changes, then you have to look at your income and what you can do to change that. Can mm -hmm. you ask your employer for, for extra work um, so that you can get maybe get some overtime? Do you need to look for additional work elsewhere by, you know, taking on a part time job or even doing some, you know, odds, odds and end jobs for your family or your friends, um, selling things that you don't need to pay down a debt? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I can't tell you how much stuff I have laying around <laughs> that I can't wait to sell. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, once you pay down one debt that frees up money to start putting extra towards the next debt. 
once you pay that debt down, now you've got two monthly payments freed up to start putting extra towards the next one. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's a slow process, but if you stick with it, you can change your, your circumstances. Right. Um, you know, and I always say be open to, to talking to a financial advisor or a financial counselor. Um, their knowledge is invaluable, mm -hmm. you know, and, and take advantage of some financial or, or credit counseling courses that they offer um, online. There's there's tons of them. Um, and, and just having that knowledge and, and learning those strategies can make all the difference. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So, you know, at what point, Hillary, you mentioned talking to a, a financial counselor or going to your lender or other other creditors, you know, at what point should those conversations happen? You know, I would I would consider as soon as you find as soon as you see that you have a, a deficit in your budget and you eliminate those, like I said, the wants versus needs and you eliminate the, the wants spending um, and you do all the things that are you know easy to do, cancel subscription services, reduce your service plans. You know, if, if you're still um, finding yourself in a deficit, reach out to your, your creditors. A lot of them have assistance programs, especially if you're experiencing a financial hardship or had experienced one in the past. You know, there's things that they can do like interest rate re uh, reductions, waiving fees or refunding fees. Um, so many assistance programs, you know, even if it's a temporary one, um, like a deferment or something like that, you know. Um, there's so many things out there that they can do and that you can take advantage of. Mm -hmm. And I know we say this in probably every every video you and I do together, we say this, but it's important to hammer home. There's nothing wrong with that, right? Like those programs wouldn't exist if right. people didn't need them, right? It's Absolutely. not embarrassment. It's not something you've you know done wrong necessarily. Um, and they exist because people need them. Absolutely. And we have a whole, you know, here we have a whole department and, you know, separate processes that are specifically dedicated to, um, you know, our members when they're experiencing a financial hardship. That's what mm -hmm. we're here for. That's where we come into play. And a lot of other lenders have the same type of structure and the same type of processes. So don't be embarrassed. It's not something to be embarrassed about every, you know, I, maybe not everybody, but a lot of people, the majority of the world experiences this and is going through this too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, Hillary, again, thank you for hopping on. As always, it's uh, invaluable information. I'm sure that we will see you again. <laughs> I would be happy to. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Take care.